Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm Haley, if you're new here, and I'm a fourth year dental student, really, really close to graduation and becoming a dentist officially. So I think we're a little overdue for some catch up and a Q&A seemed like a perfect way to do that. So I asked you all to submit questions on Instagram of things you wanted to know. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer those. We've got a little bit of everything. Like I said, some life updates, what's the plan with my life post-grad, what's to come with this channel, and some fun advice of recommendations and other things that I have for any of you that are earlier on in your dental journey. Did you take a gap year and would you recommend it? I did not take a gap year, so I went from <laughs> pre-K, through grade school, through high school, through four years at Michigan State, through my four years here at U of M for dental school. So I've been in school my entire life since I was a little kid. <laughs> and I think gap years are wonderful, but since I didn't take one, I don't have a lot of personal experience about it. I have had a few guests on my podcast that have done gap years, so definitely check those out. I usually put gap year in the title of the episode, so if you just search Dental Download Podcast gap year, there should be a few options for you there. A lot of my classmates have taken at least one gap year, if not multiple. Some people dentistry is their second career. Could have been that they were in dental hygiene or a totally different career path, or they just were a little more non-traditional in getting through all of their undergrad requirements. And I think it's a great way to take some time off and boost your application if that's something you need to do. And I still think you can definitely get into dental school even if you take a gap year for personal, fun, whatever reasons, and not academic application boosting reasons. I think schools will think it's awesome if you are choosing to make sure you're as ready as possible for when you do start your dental program, rather than maybe going right into it because you're worried about being old when you graduate or worried about running out of steam when it comes to keeping up with academics. So it's really a completely personal decision, but for me, I felt like going straight through was the right thing to do. And I was fortunate to be accepted my first application cycle. Where are you moving and when? <laughs> Good question. I posted on an Instagram story the practice that I'm working at. I haven't like done any in-feed Instagram sharing or talked about it on YouTube yet. I'm sure eventually I will be sharing that, but essentially it is Southwest Michigan, so I'm more from the east side of the state, Detroit area, so I'm moving basically straight west and a little bit more south, and I'm gonna be working in a small rural community and living about 30 minutes away from there, so I'm a little bit closer to more activities, stores, anything that I wanna do outside of work, and I will be moving with my boyfriend, Justin. So we've been long distance all of dental school, I think most of you know that. First semester of dental school, I was single, and then met him in the fall of my first year, and we've been dating since, and he's, lived anywhere from four to six hours away driving the whole time pretty much that I've been in school. So I'm really excited for the end of long distance. And of course, I'm excited about my future job. How do you feel about graduating? Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. As you could imagine, who wouldn't be? Especially since I mentioned I went all the way through school up until now, I'm so excited to be done with school, but I know there's so much left to learn. And that's what I'm actually excited for is to get out and get in there and get learning more and growing my skills more, but in a way where I have more control of what CE I'm taking, what patients I'm trying to get in my schedule, what procedures I'm doing versus referring, what procedures I'm observing from the other doctors in my office, and really just taking the reins and trying to grow and be as amazing as I can be for my patients. I know when we come out of dental school, we have so much to learn, so I'm very much aware of that. I feel fairly confident with general dentistry things, bombed out teeth, caries removal, restorations, crowns. I would have moderate confidence with endo. I think I need a little bit more practice to be more proficient with that. And I'm getting a lot more confident with extractions as well. And we still have about eight weeks left, including two weeks of those where I will be away on external rotation, which I just did a vlog of external rotation too. And this has definitely been the very, very best site that I've had yet. So make sure you watch that vlog if you wanna know the kind of procedures we're doing and the schedule, because it's like being a real dentist. It's amazing. I would say it's bittersweet though, of course, leaving living with friends for all of my time, being an undergrad in dental school, it's gonna be different to be living with my partner and kind of starting our family versus being a student is just so different. And living in a college town is always really fun and living in a more 
busy downtown compared to moving out to the country is also going to be a huge transition and I'm definitely going to miss those student discounts. <laughs> Why did you choose Umich for dental school? I know I keep plugging other videos but I've been doing this for a long time since junior year of undergrad so I've talked about a lot of topics as you could imagine over the past six years. So I do have a video all about why I chose UMich for dental school. But some of the highlights I would say is the Pathways program is really really cool and I think fairly unique. We're able to do either an immersion project with one of the great faculty at the dental school. As you know we're very well renowned for our research or if you're like me and that's not really your thing you can also do the selectives pathway where you take extra classes. You have to take a minimum of two per academic year. We have three semesters in an academic year so you would have a selective you could have the next semester with nothing and then the third semester you would have another selective or you can take one every term. I myself have taken some for public speaking which is really helpful for my videos, my podcasts, and the presentations that I do to pre-dental students and then I've also been in an Invisalign selective for third and fourth year and now all of fourth year I've been doing an Invisalign case on a live patient and I also did a mini rotations class earlier in dental school so we usually don't get exposed to hospital oral surgery, endo, perio until your third year, but I took the selective class second year so I was able to do a tiny tiny bit like a day in each of those settings and that was a really unique experience as well. I also think we have a pretty good experience with the specialties. If you seek it out you can do more specialty procedures again through that selectives pathway or you can just spend time at least assisting in the clinics. We do have different procedures that get referred to the specialty clinic since we have all the specialties. We don't necessarily do as advanced procedures in our normal patient clinic that D3s and D4s see patients in. But if you're really passionate about OS or really passionate about peds or endo, you can spend a lot of time pursuing that. But if you're someone like me that wants to do general dentistry and wants to get a little bit of everything, it can be hard to spread yourself out between all those specialty clinics as well as maintaining your own patient. The number one thing though, honestly, of why this was my top choice school was tuition because I am from Michigan, so in-state tuition is huge. I would say tuition should be your number one, if not your number two thing of factors deciding between schools. If it's a small amount of a difference between two schools, I obviously go to the one that you think is the better institution or the better fit for you, but if it's $75,000, $150,000 difference, then I think you really need to sit down and decide if that's really worth it. I think we have some really quality faculty that have really made my own dental school experience wonderful and I can tell that almost every single class that I've had, the faculty that's teaching it is so, so passionate and really cares about us and it's really about what the effort that you put forth as a student for what you're gonna take out of the class or the sim lab or whatever it may be. They're also always trying to be on the front end of technology, which I appreciate as a student that wants to work in a digital dental practice in the future. Of course, we have an excellent reputation. That's, I think, just the name Michigan definitely carries some weight and whether or not which school is really the best school I don't think matters. It's more about what's the best fit for you and your career goals and your life. And the other thing, like I said, it's really about what's the best fit for you. I did a lot of experiences at UMich's dental school as a pre-dental student since I was not too far away over in East Lansing at Michigan State. So going to different pre-dental days I think is a great way to figure out which program is the best fit for you and just overall get comfortable at a specific dental school. So I went to several pre-dental days through ASDA as well as some open houses and I had a few students each year ahead of me that went to Michigan State with me as I was going through undergrad. So they were not only kind of mentors to me but some of them were friends and that of course made me a lot more comfortable starting at a new program when I already knew some people. How's D4 year going? It's going really well. Honestly, even better than I expected, I think. I knew I'd have some free time, which has been great. I'm so grateful that I got the INBDE done back in third year, at the end of third year. I have a discount code now for INBDE bootcamp and for DAT bootcamp, all of the bootcamp programs. If you want to check it out, I'll have it in the description to get you 10% off. But not having to worry about studying didactic type boards has been amazing. We still have the clinical boards that we had to take throughout fourth year and I still have one left coming up March 9th. But past almost all of them, past endo, pros, and perio, as well as the CDCA OSCE, all I have left now is restorative, which debatably is one of the hardest ones. So fingers crossed for that. I'm gonna be practicing 
the next couple weeks up until then but we do have spring break in the middle so it's a little stressful just in terms of time management and feeling like I have enough time to prepare and that's really the biggest thing with D4 is a lot of time management you have a lot more free time but you do have a lot more patience in your roster and more things to keep track of with all of your requirements I've been very organized since I started clinic back in third year and I've been keeping track of all of my patients that I need for my different test cases and graduation requirements and I was able to get all of my total graduation credits done as well as all my test cases in the fall semester. I just have to do one more root canal patient and if I can't find one of my own live patients I can do the competency on a typodont but I would rather obviously have a real patient so I have a couple that I'm going to go pitch to the endo department next week and see if I can schedule one of them to do myself. Overall D4 year is as wonderful as you hear I honestly think and finding out where I was working and signing on that job that I'm so excited about too like I don't have any regrets or bad feelings is so cool and the fact that I did that pretty early in D4 has been nice to know like exactly what I'm working towards and what kind of my scope of procedures is going to be and it just gives me a lot more clarity on how I want the rest of D4 to go the past couple months and then the next couple months before graduation. And graduation is going to be May 10th, so mark your calendars. I'm just kidding. But we finish clinic April 18th is my last day. Sometime after that, I'm probably going to go see my parents in Florida, depending if I have to retake any of the restorative boards. And then also depending when I'm going to be moving into our new house where I'm going to be working, which we are just renting a house. I wish I was buying a house, but that just doesn't make sense right now. Speaking of finances, someone asked about my repayment strategy for after dental school. Honestly, I'm a future dentist. I am no financial planner, so same way that you wouldn't want a financial planner giving you dental advice, I'm not going to give you financial advice. I personally am going to be working with Twinley Financial John, and I've talked to him a bit already. I've had him on my podcast, and I've really liked the guidance I've gotten so far, so at least initially I'm planning to do some more consults with him post-grad once I know exactly the range that my income is going to be. I've obviously started to personally budget with my daily minimum guarantee, but based on other people at the practice, I'm assuming I'm going to be making more than my minimum pretty quickly after a month or two. So I want to work about three or four months and then go ahead and start working with the financial planner and figuring out the best strategies for student loan repayment as well as what I'm going to be doing towards saving for potentially buying a practice and buying a house and everything else that comes in life that you need money to do. So I'm going to be working with him and it's nice he'll be able to kind of jointly advise myself and my partner because even though my partner's not a dentist, we still have kind of that joint income to work with and we're planning as like a future family, not just me as an individual person. I don't have any commission or anything for referring people to John over at Twinley Financial, but I will put his website link in the description and then I'll also put Dr. Connie Wang's two episodes on her podcast with her financial advisor that she works with. That way if you want to get some more perspectives and maybe you want to work with that guy or you just want to hear more about financial planning for dentists, you can listen to those two episodes as well. And another good resource specifically for student loans is going to be Student Loan Planner. Again, no referral specifically from me, but if you want to check out that website, they also do a free consult and planning. And then for, I think, a fairly low rate, they will plan out your financial repayment plan for student loans. Okay, we're on to the last couple questions here. Book recommendations for self-improvement and like dental books. So dental specific, I would say Enjoy the Ride by Dr. Alan Stern is great. And E-Myth Dentist is also great. And I've recently just been finishing up Saved by the Mouth, which is by Dr. Katie Lee. And that one's written for the general public, not really for dentists. So it's really easy to understand, especially if maybe you're a pre-dental student or something and you don't really have a lot of education dental specific yet. Or if you want to like give it to your mom or someone else to read, I really do like that book. And Saved by the Mouth and Enjoy the Ride are both fairly short as well, which I think is great if you're not a big reader like myself. It's kind of intimidating to pick up a really thick book. And then for self-improvement, the number one one that I always recommend is Atomic Habits. I think it's excellent, so if you haven't read that yet, make sure you do. I actually just recorded today in these same scrubs if you watch the video version of my podcast. That's going to go up on March 4th, a whole episode 
30 minutes of me talking about dental and self-improvement leadership books. So go ahead and listen to that when it goes up. And the last question, how did you look for a job for being an associate general dentist? In the effort of not being redundant, as I said, I have two vlogs showing snippets of the process. And then I also made multiple podcasts, just really honest, raw about my experience as it happened because I would say like practice by practice by practice that I saw, I thought they were all gonna be really good fits and then I was like very confused or disappointed afterwards when I didn't have a good feeling about it or felt like maybe it wasn't or maybe I was being too critical. So there was a lot of different <laughs> things going through my head. All those podcasts were recorded throughout the process, like kind of real time after I saw each office. And then at the end when I finally signed and everything. So if you just look up dental download podcast, associate job search, you should find I think three or four different episodes that are great to listen to if you're commuting or at home, cooking, cleaning, whatever it may be. So that's everything for this Q and A video. I hope you all enjoyed a little catch up with me and I'm looking forward to more vlogs on the channel before graduation and then eventually moving and becoming a dentist. I'm interested to see what all you want from this YouTube channel when I am a dentist. It's so crazy, like I'm so excited. So what kind of stuff do you wanna see? Do you wanna see outside of work? What a dentist is able to do with their time because I will have a pretty nice work-life balance with the hours that my office is? Or do you wanna hear about like the cases that I'm doing and how I'm growing my knowledge from what I graduate dental school with, hopefully doing slightly more advanced procedures over time. Do you wanna like come with me to different CE around the country? Like what do you wanna see? So please comment below or go ahead and message me over on my Instagram so that I know what kind of content to put out in the next couple months as I'm graduating and eventually starting work, hopefully mid-June if my license is ready. With all that said, thank you all again so much for your support over the years and I can't wait to keep making more videos for you.